Years ago, they found a fossil that was aged about 3 million years. A lot of scientists believe that this is the most important fossil that has ever been found. The fossil's name is Lucy. The type of animal that this fossil belongs to is a type of primate, and this type of primate is called the Australopithecus. Scientists believe that Lucy was one of the first steps primates took to become human. We mentioned this in other videos, but all primates originate from Africa. Three million years ago, the way the planet looked was not that different. But when you look at it more closely, you'll notice a lot of differences. Right now, when you look at the animal kingdom in Africa, there is a whole lot of different animals. Three million years ago, it was exactly the same. But a lot of those animals that lived back then are extinct now and they're no longer here. But our video is not about extinct animals. One of the coolest animals that lived back then was the saber-toothed tiger. When Lucy was living her life 3 million years ago, the most dangerous animal was a crocodile. All animals need to drink water, and these guys are the kings of the water. Instead of them finding the food, the food came to them. They would camp in the water until someone showed up and they needed a drink. And Lucy's family was probably one of those. Lucy's life was very hard. She goes to drink water, the crocodiles attack. She wants to get some fruit, a saber tooth attacks her. She goes to hunt some food, she gets hunted down by other predators. So it was extremely difficult for them to find food. Most Australopithecus fossils that have been found in the wild, they were mostly killed rather than die of natural causes. It is very rare to find a fossil that had not taken damage. There is fossils where leopard teeth are imprinted on somebody's skull. But a lot of the fossils are obvious that crocodiles had attacked them. And the way they realized that is that on the bones, there is crocodile teeth marks. The weather is hot and you're getting thirsty. You gotta get to the water and take a drink. But without paying proper attention, drinking water is very dangerous because there is a crocodile that has been sitting there for hours for someone like you to do that. From the fossils they found, one of them is very interesting. It's a skull of a three-year-old Australopithecus. This child was not killed with a crocodile, not by a saber tooth or a leopard. On its skull, there's marks where a very strong bird picked it up and killed it, probably an eagle. Between all the skulls that have been found of Australopithecus, most of them are smashed up. But the best one is Lucy's skull. Lucy's fossil and other Australopithecus sh showed archaeologists that this primate was slowly coming down from the trees and they wanted to live on the ground. But how did they know that? With the help of the shoulder bones. Because their shoulders look in between a homo sapiens and a chimpanzee's shoulder. As you know, different types of monkeys need a strong shoulder to hang from trees like this. Australopithecus shoulder shows archaeologists that it's starting to get weaker because they don't need the shoulder anymore. But on the side of that, other things are becoming stronger and stronger. We said this before, the biggest problem for an Australopithecus was probably a crocodile. But we missed one important thing, and that problem is finding food. This primate's teeth shows us that it mostly ate greens and fruits. And most importantly, they would eat the roots of these plants. When scientists realized that Australopithecus would eat the roots of plants, they realize that they're smarter than they look because they realize that the roots of these plants 
make them more full. There I say, they had more calories. And the most interesting part about this is that chimpanzees, one of the smartest monkeys, still doesn't know that they could eat the roots of different types of plants. And with this alone, we realize that Australopithecus were moving forward and they were separating themselves from other primates. Archaeologists believe that this was one of the steps that these primates took to become smarter. In different parts of Africa, archaeologists have found the footprint of different types of Australopithecus and that showed them that they would walk on two legs rather than all fours. Just like we said before, Australopithecus mostly ate greens and fruits, but it's not like they couldn't eat meat. They could very well eat meat, but it was hard for them to find it or hunt for it. When you look at different types of monkeys, they use tool, but it's nothing complicated. They just use a rock to break something they need open. This is something other animals can't do except primates, and the rock is considered a tool. But there is a high chance that Australopithecus, primates like Lucy, used to modify rocks and turn them into tools. This is another reason that they believe Australopithecus were separating themselves from different monkeys. The oldest modified stone tools was about 3,300,000 years old, and that's a lot older than Lucy herself. No animals right now can modify tools and sharpen it. So this shows us that their mind was starting to spark a little bit harder than other primates. An Australopithecus average height was about one meter, and with this short of a height, they couldn't run either. History shows us that they slowly start eating meat. If you've seen our video about jackals, you'll see how they hunt for meat. Australopithecus were kind of similar. They would wait for other predators to kill their prey, eat whatever they need, and then after the predators left, they could take over the leftovers. Predators like lion can't eat all the meat on the bone. They eat whatever that's on top and leave the rest for someone else. But Australopithecus had hands and they had somewhat of a brain. So they realized that they could break these bones, open it up, and there's a lot more meat inside, so they could use 100% of the meat they found. After a predator kills something, usually vultures hang around until they're done so they can take over. But it seems like the vultures hated the ancient Australopithecus because they would eat everything and just leave the bone. When you compare Lucy's skull to a modern chimpanzee's, you'll see that Lucy's skull is already bigger than them. Chimpanzee is one of the smartest primates today, but it can't make tools. It still can't figure out that it could eat the roots of plants. And if you give it a box full of food, its brain can't figure out how to open the box to reach the food. In an ancient South African cave, this stone was found. Archaeologists believe that this stone is about 2.9 million years old. They can't believe what it is, and they don't know what it is. But some say that this might be the oldest statue in the world. And some say the Australopithecus did this, rather than nature. What do you guys think? Doesn't it look like a face? Just like we said, Lucy was a female Australopithecus, and she most likely had kids. Lucy's skull shows archaeologists that it's very different from a chimpanzee. A female chimpanzee could very easily give birth without pain. But Lucy's body was very different, and when she gave birth, it looked like it was very painful, and there was a high chance of the mother or the child dying in the process. Another difference between Australopithecus and animals like gorillas and chimpanzees is that in different groups, there could be only one male gorilla. But it seems like the Australopithecus didn't have a problem like that. Scientists believe that another difference between modern primates and Australopithecus is that the father would not leave after having a child, and they would actually live together rather than leave. When you look at Lucy's skeleton, archaeologists believe that she died because of natural causes, but she does have a broken bone, and it seems like she lived with the broken bone rather than the cause of death. Scientists believe that these ancient primates would mourn the dead 
of their children and their families. And this is something that's not seen in most animals. But you could find this feature in chimpanzees. The story of these creatures is not over. We want to know where we came from and how we got here. But this is with the help of evolution and science. When the story of primates reaches Homo habilis, with the help of the fossils, you could tell there is a bunch of differences from Australopithecus. To understand the story of human evolution better, we have to know that the modern human, meaning us, is called the Homo sapien. Homo means man and sapien means wise. So Homo sapien means wise man. But this episode is dedicated to Homo habilis that comes after Australopithecus. So what does Homo habilis mean? Just like we said, Homo means man and habilis means able. When they named the Homo habilis this name, they didn't know that the Australopithecus could also build tools back then. If they noticed this earlier, they might have named Australopithecus habilis. Either way, the human we're gonna talk about today is called the Homo habilis, and they didn't change the name, so it remained. The Homo habilis is found in the southern and eastern Africa because that's where the fossils were found. The first human, meaning the Australopithecus, lived from two to two and a half million years ago, and Homo habilis is up next at about one and a half to two million years ago. Archaeologists know Homo habilis, the next step after Australopithecus. And the age of the fossils shows us that the habilis came after these guys. It's also obvious that between the ages of these two, meaning 500,000 to 1 million years, evolution did its job. And Homo habilis is much more able and better than the Australopithecus, both in terms of body and intelligence. Some ask, is it possible for a species to turn into a different one? But they never realize that the evolution takes 500,000 to over 1 million years. It's not like evolution happens in 10, 100, or 1,000 years. The biggest difference between the Homo habilis and the Australopithecus is the snout area. And from the difference, you can clearly see that it's much smaller now. You could clearly tell that the front of the face is much flatter than before. On the other hand, the eyebrow bridge is much smaller and slimmer. One of the things that did not change between the Australopithecus and the Habilis is the nose. Because it's still a flat nose rather than the human type nose where it comes out and has bones. Even though the Homo habilis is called the abled man, but it wasn't that much more abled than the Australopithecus, it would also use rocks and wood to create tools, but not anything more complicated than the Australopithecus. But do you know what's the biggest difference in terms of ability between these two? The biggest difference is that the Australopithecus was very rare for it to make tools, but for the Homo habilis, it was very common to build these tools. So you could say you would have to be a genius Australopithecus to be able to build different types of stone tools. So when Lucy was living, it was very rare for them to have a skill like this. A lot of scientists believe that the Homo habilis didn't really need to innovate to make better tools. They would sharpen stone and turn it into different types of tools like knives, arrows, and hammers. The innovation that the Homo habilis used continued for the next hundreds of thousands of years. So it shows us that they didn't need to work harder to make the tools better. Some people ask, how do they put a difference between chimpanzees and ancient primates? First of all, the fossils prove a lot of different things throughout evolution. With the help of the fossils, it's very obvious that these animals would not walk on all four but they would rather walk. Another huge difference you see between monkeys and ancient primates is the power of their shoulder, which we talked about in the previous video. And it's also good to know that Homo habilis shoulder is even weaker than the Australopithecus. Another thing that's different 
is that they stand more upright so their spine is more straight but they're still not as straight as a modern human in our previous clip we said the australopithecus has an average height of one meter but as you can clearly see the homo habilis grew by a lot and they have an average height of about 1.6 meters and their weight gain by 10 kilograms so they have an average weight of 50 kilos another huge difference you'll see in this primate is that it has longer legs and its arm does not hang as low as his knees anymore the longer legs allowed him to walk more straight and run faster lucy or other australopithecus could not run very fast the reason australopithecus couldn't run fast is because they were very top heavy and their legs were short and small so let's talk about the most important body part, the brain. What's the difference between those two? We first have to say that the size of the brain doesn't determine how smart a species is. Like for example, an elephant has a ginormous brain. It's smart, but it's not that smart. You have to compare the body size to the brain ratio. And Homo habilis, compared to its body size, it had a rather large brain. Just the same way where the Homo habilis grew in size and weight, its brain also grew. You could see the size difference with the help of their skulls as well. Homo habilis is much less clumsy than the Australopithecus, and in terms of finding food and hunting, it could think longer and better. You could imagine that the Australopithecus didn't use his brain power as hard as the Homo habilis. When scientists inspect the Australopithecus skull, you'll see that the size of its brain was about 400 cubic centimeters. But when you look at the Homo habilis, it's about 600 cubic centimeters. Australopithecus male to female size was not much different, but when you get to early Homo habilis, they get very different in sizes, and the males grow much larger. This is something you see in gorillas, because a male gorilla is usually hundreds of kilograms larger than the female gorilla. But when you get into the later Homo habilis, meaning hundreds of thousands of years, the male and female size become very similar. And scientists believe that this size difference continues to this day. The more you move forward with the Homo habilis, its snout gets smaller, the eyebrow bridge gets thinner, and its face gets flatter, and its nose also starts to form to look more like a human. And of course, its brain power is becoming more complex and more powerful. Luis and Mary Leakey were the first people to find the Homo habilis skull, and that was in the year 1955. Most of the information we gave about the Homo habilis was based of the different fossils that they found with the help of different archaeological work. And Raymond Dart was the first person to use the Greek work habilis on this type of primate. And just like we said, Habilis is a Greek word for able, or you could also call it sufficient ability, power, or skillful. For the Homo habilis to stay alive, it had to use its IQ. The Homo habilis had a lot of enemies where it lived. Predators like hyenas, leopards, saber-toothed tigers, and different types of crocodile. So in this type of a lifestyle, the Homo habilis was forced to use its brain to stay alive longer. You could say the pressure this creature put on its brain helped it to evolve to get smarter and smarter. We have to move to about 1 million years ago when the habilis reaches its evolution and they turn into the Homo erectus. But that's for the next episode. So why is the Homo erectus considered the first human and not the other ones that came before it? First of all, it was much more intelligent. The tools they would use is found everywhere in the world and it shows their brain power was much better than before. It was the first human that finally left Africa and went everywhere else. In the last video, we introduced the Homo habilis, which basically defines handyman. And the reason they gave it this name 
was that they thought the Homo habilis was the first human to create tools. But later on they realized that the first ever human, the Australopithecus, created the first tool. Australopithecus up next, Homo habilis. And when we get to Homo erectus, about 2 million years has already passed. So this evolution took about 2 million years and we just got to Homo erectus about 1 million years ago. So look-wise, how different did the Homo erectus look like? The Homo erectus got bigger, taller, smaller teeth, smaller jaw, and its jaw moved back. And most importantly, its brain power grew inside. The way this human stood and the way it walked was the reason they gave it this name. Homo erectus basically means a human that could stand upright because its spine was more straight than the other ones before it. If you remember, the Homo habilis brain size is about 600 cubic centimeters. But Homo erectus brain size has basically doubled at about 1200 cubic centimeters. And this is extremely close to modern humans because our brain size is about 1350 cubic centimeters. When we look at the body of a Homo erectus, we see that not only is the spine more straight, but it has a smaller waist. And with the help of that, it allows the Homo erectus to run much faster and not have a hard time doing so for a long period of time. Some scientists say the reason that Homo erectus became much more hairless than the other ones before it is that they would run for a long period of time and the hair would make them get extremely hot. So the longer the time goes on, the more hairless these humans get. Do you see the Homo erectus? Even though it came from the Homo habilis, but it's much closer to a modern human than the Homo habilis itself. When scientists examined the bone of the Homo erectus, they realized that it ate a lot of meat and it basically made up most of its diet. So that shows us that it could hunt really well. It is a theory but it's very obvious that they most likely hunted in groups. One of the most important thing our brain power helps us do is communicate with one another. So could Homo erectus communicate with one another using a language? Unfortunately, talking does not fossilize and they couldn't write so they didn't write anything down for us to read. And that is why there is some doubt on if they could talk or not. But we know something. We know that its brain power was much better than the ones before it and it most likely could communicate very well. We don't know the language or how it spoke but we know that with this brain power you could communicate with each other very well. If you've seen our video about when humans controlled fire, you're familiar when the humans actually were able to do it, and it was by the Homo erectus. One of the most important discoveries human had figured out is controlling fire. This fire allowed people to cook their food, and since it's easier to chew cooked food, our teeth got smaller, made our jaws smaller, and since cooked food is more nutrition than raw food, it helped our brain to grow more in size and our body to grow. In our video about controlling fire, we gave an estimation on when we did this and it was figured out by the dirt that was cooked underneath it. Like one family in a location had the fire going for years on end and since it was on for so long, it literally cooked the dirt underneath it. And the way the dirt cooked shows us that this was a campfire site that was ancient but unfortunately you can't put an exact date on it because homo erectus lived on earth for about one million years and it's not like a hundred years where you can figure out the date but there is a theory that some scientists and archaeologists had come up with and they say ancient humans cooked food before fire and they knew how to cook it halfway at least but they had to be next to hot springs they would put the meat inside these hot water and after some time it would halfway cook and they realized it was easier to eat and it tasted a little bit better 
But of course, this is all a theory. We can't put an exact date on when the Homo erectus left Africa, but we could estimate about 700,000 years ago. But some scientists deny this and give a different date on when they left. And some believe that they left about 200,000 years ago. But something that is guaranteed is that Homo erectus discovered to control fire, then they left Africa because now they could live in colder climate. The tools that Australopithecus and Homo habilis used was a simple rock that had a sharp head, but the handle or where they held onto the stone was not very well made. But Homo erectus would build tools with rock that was very sharp and it also was nice to hold in your hand. An interesting tool that was made by Homo erectus is this, which is called the hand axe, a very heavy piece of stone that's extremely sharp. With the help of this tool, they did pretty much everything with it. They hunted with it, they cut meat with it, they got rid of the bones with it, and anything else they needed. These tools are extremely heavy and very sharp, and with one hit, you could damage something very badly. Imagine five Homo erectus with five of these hand axes, they could easily defeat any size animal. You could say some of these Homo erectus realize that their brain power is what keeps them alive. There were a lot of wooden tools back then but wood doesn't fossilize that easily and it's not like stone that could stay for millions of years. The oldest wooden tool that was found is a wooden spear that's about 500,000 years old and that's during the Homo erectus era. They're not sure how it stayed 500,000 years but it was buried underneath. They even found tools that were made from animal bones, but this was extremely rare compared to other tools, especially stone. There is some drawing that was left by Homo erectus as well. A very simple drawing that has been done on this clam, and this was found in Java, Indonesia. It's not a complicated drawing, but hundreds of thousands of years ago, a Homo erectus drew this. You could say this is the first drawing, But in our video about Australopithecus, we showed this piece of rock that has a face on it. But they don't know if the Australopithecus carved this, or it naturally came like this. When you look at the life of Homo erectus throughout history, you see that they were here for a very long time and they evolved very well. You can't compare their evolution to right now, but for back then, they evolved very quickly. Scientists believe that about 117,000 years ago, Homo erectus vanished. It's not like they disappeared. They basically turned into two different branches where the stronger ones survive and the weaker ones die off, which is called natural selection. After this, we have two different types of human. One of those is Neanderthal, which you should know, and the other ones are Homo sapien, which you should really know because that's us. You have to know that in terms of science, all of these things we said are facts we read. But the times are all theory. Like some scientists say that Homo erectus showed up about 1 million years ago. But some others say no, about 1.5 million years ago they began to show up. There is different theories about the time. But the main story on what happened and what took place is all the same. Around 50,000 years ago, in modern day Iraq, a Neanderthal lived there with the scientific name of Shanidar I. But archaeologists gave it an easier name, Nandi. If you remember the previous episode, we introduced Homo erectus to you guys, and they were divided into two different branches. One branch is the Neanderthal and the other branch is the modern human or Homo sapien. But first, let's get to know the Neanderthals. One thing all primates shared in common was that their life was very much in danger at all times. And if you're not careful, you will get destroyed. 
In the previous video, we talked about how Homo erectus discovered controlling fire. And after that, they left Africa and entered Asia and Europe. And that means Neanderthals were only found in Europe and Asia. And just like we said, Nandi's fossil was in modern day Iraq. And that means they lived in colder climate. And that equals having a harder time surviving. Just like we said, their fossils have only been found in Asia and Europe. The ones that lived in colder climates, like for example, this jaw that was found in northern France, it lived in a very cold climate, and they had a hard time finding any food in that climate. Scientists can look at this bone and say that this Neanderthal died of starvation, and they believe it was because of the cold temperatures. In modern day Croatia, in a cave called Krapina, and in this place, there was a family of Neanderthals that lived there. By the way the bones were damaged, archaeologists believe that a group of Neanderthals attacked this family in the cave, and they were eaten. So this is the reason that Neanderthals practice cannibalism. Even to this day, if there is an animal in that kind of a climate, they're gonna have a hard time finding food. Just imagine back then. But let's get back to our friend, Nandi. Just like other Neanderthals, Nandi came from the Homo erectus, so he knows how to control fire. He knows how to build and use tools. And he knows how to hunt. That's if he finds something to hunt. Around the places Neanderthal bones were found, they also found bird bones. And that shows us they used to hunt birds, cook them, and eat them. When scientists analyzed Nandi's skull, they realized that he was hit in the head plenty of times throughout his life. But he did not die because the bone naturally healed around the crack. Nandi lived a very hard life. His arm was broken and it healed extremely awkward. And when scientists look at this bone structure of a surviving Neanderthal, they can't imagine the pain he was feeling. A skull that fractured a few times, a hand that was broken completely off. There is no doctors, painkillers or anything they could help. So it was a very painful life. One of the cracks on Nandi's skull shows us that he was also blind in one eye. And this is the reason scientists believe that his family helped him survive. Because if that wasn't the case, he would easily die. But if he stayed alive, it means the people around him were smart and they knew how to take care of him. I'm not talking about open heart surgery, but at least stopping the blood or stopping predators from attacking him. At around that time, Neanderthals probably had access to a plant that helped them ease the pain. And that might be the reason Nandi was still alive after all those injuries. When people imagine a life of a Neanderthal, they think they go out on a group attack a mammoth, and have plenty of meat for a long time. Some of them did have access to that much meat, and they could attack them with a group. But most of them weren't this lucky. A mammoth that was attacked was found in modern day Germany that weighed 11 tons, and it was killed by Neanderthals. But Nandi didn't have access to mammoth because he lived in modern day Iraq and mammoths live much more north. The meat that was available to Neanderthals was mountain goats and scientists believe that it was extremely impressive for a Neanderthal to hunt down mountain goats. It's not like today where you can just point a gun at them and kill them. 
Just because Neanderthals could hunt down mountain goats with ease shows us that they were much smarter than we think because you needed strategy to hunt down a goat. Neanderthals also hunted down wild horses and that's because in modern day Syria they found a skull of a wild horse that had a sharp stone jammed into it. Around the time we're telling the story of Neanderthals, Homo sapien or modern humans used to live as well. A Neanderthal has a much larger skull compared to the Homo sapien, but it's not any smarter. Neanderthals were much bulkier and they also had more power, but the Homo sapiens had something that the Neanderthals didn't and that was a much more efficient body and that also made it get smarter and smarter. Neanderthals used to eat a lot too because their body needed it. A Neanderthal man would probably have to eat 7,000 calories a day and this is in a way where a homo sapien needed as much as us, about 3,000 calories a day. Because of them needing this much calorie made them eat whatever they found. Imagine all types of insects and all the meat you can find in an animal body. And the homo sapiens would eat meat and fruits mostly. One of the biggest problems for Neanderthals is the amount of food they needed per day. And when a mother had a baby, they needed much more food to provide milk for their child. And providing this much food was a huge hassle. And alongside the Neanderthals, the Homo sapien are living a much easier life. And they don't need as much food as them. They need half the calories the Neanderthals need and they don't eat as bad as the Neanderthal. The ancestors of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, the Homo erectus had wooden tool, but they don't fossilize like stone tool. And unfortunately, we don't know what kind of wooden tools they made. And this is the same thing for Neanderthals and ancient Homo sapiens. They made plenty of tools, but we don't have any access to them. The most amount of fossils found from people back then is mostly in caves. It's obvious they chose it for safety. Another reason was that it was warm and safe, but it was also safe from predators, especially when there was a fire inside the cave. If wood fossilized like stone, we would know much more about their ingenuity than we do today. The thing we found from ancient humans shows us that they would carve out animal bones and teeth into different objects and they would even make jewelry type things. One of the many things people know about caveman is that they had a lot of caveman paintings and they really showed their creative side. Nandi is living with his family, but sometimes when they go hunting, they meet other Neanderthals. But sometimes they were confronted with other human type. And what we're talking about is the Homo sapiens. In most parts of the world, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens had a relationship and they also mated. That is why if you analyze anybody's DNA on planet Earth, you will find a little bit of Neanderthal in there. Just like we said, Neanderthals evolved from the Homo erectus that came from Africa. But Neanderthals were not found in Africa. They were found in Asia and Europe. And what you're seeing here is the location of the fossils found of Neanderthals. And scientists say if you compare a Asian, a European or an African DNA, the percentage of Neanderthal in the African DNA is much less. Homo sapiens and Neanderthals were so close that they could have children and their children could have children. We can't 100% say 
what these two thought about one another. But a theory suggests that when they met each other, they really couldn't tell that if they're different or not. Maybe when a homo sapien saw a Neanderthal, they would think it's just a different looking human, not a different type. But let's get back to Nandi, our champion today. After years of pain and suffering, Nandi eventually dies. We don't know how Nandi died, but the most interesting part is that Nandi was buried and it was obvious it was a grave rather than an accident. But this is not the case only for Nandi. Plenty of Neanderthal graves have been found all over Asia and Europe. You might ask, why don't we talk about Homo sapien? It wasn't surprising for a Homo sapien to do it, but it's interesting when a Neanderthal did it. Either way, Neanderthals eventually go extinct around 30,000 years ago. Their population declines and finally, the last one dies. It is not obvious why Neanderthals went extinct, but one of the main reasons Neanderthals went extinct is that they needed a lot of food. But providing all that food was damn near impossible. And that is why they were always hungry and they slowly went extinct. But this is in a way where the Homo sapien is living a better life. It's getting smarter and it's finding an easier way to live life. And that's us, the Homo sapiens. We are now in the second episode of the human evolution. If you've seen the first episode, you got to know Australopithecus. Archaeologists prove with different fossils that the next step in human evolution after Australopithecus is Homo habilis. When the story of primates reaches Homo habilis, with the help of the fossils, you could tell there is a bunch of differences from Australopithecus. To understand the story of human evolution better, we have to know that the modern human, meaning us, is called the Homo sapien. Homo means man and sapien means wise. So Homo sapien means wise man. But this episode is dedicated to Homo habilis that comes after Australopithecus. So what does Homo habilis mean? Just like we said, Homo means man and habilis means able. When they named the Homo habilis this name, they didn't know that the Australopithecus could also build tools back then. If they noticed this earlier, they might have named Australopithecus habilis. Either way, the human we're gonna talk about today is called the Homo habilis, and they didn't change the name, so it remained. The Homo habilis is found in the Southern and Eastern Africa, because that's where the fossils were found. The first human, meaning the Australopithecus, lived from two to two and a half million years ago. And Homo habilis is up next at about one and a half to two million years ago. Archaeologists know Homo habilis the next step after Australopithecus. And the age of the fossils shows us that the habilis came after these guys. It's also obvious that between the ages of these two, meaning 500,000 to 1 million years, evolution did its job, and Homo habilis is much more able and better than the Australopithecus, both in terms of body and intelligence. Some ask, is it possible for a species to turn into a different one? But they never realize that the evolution takes 500,000 
to over 1 million years. It's not like evolution happens in 10, 100, or 1,000 years. The biggest difference between the Homo habilis and the Australopithecus is the snout area. And from the difference, you can clearly see that it's much smaller now. You could clearly tell that the front of the face is much flatter than before. On the other hand, the eyebrow bridge is much smaller and slimmer. One of the things that did not change between the Australopithecus and the Habilis is the nose. Because it's still a flat nose rather than the human type nose where it comes out and has bones. Even though the Homo habilis is called the abled man, but it wasn't that much more abled than the Australopithecus. It would also use rocks and wood to create tools, but not anything more complicated than the Australopithecus. But do you know what's the biggest difference in terms of ability between these two? The biggest difference is that the Australopithecus was very rare for it to make tools, but for the Homo habilis, it was very common to build these tools. So you could say you would have to be a genius Australopithecus to be able to build different types of stone tools. So when Lucy was living, it was very rare for them to have a skill like this. A lot of scientists believe that the Homo habilis didn't really need to innovate to make better tools. They would sharpen stone and turn it into different types of tools like knives, arrows, and hammers. The innovation that the Homo habilis used continued for the next hundreds of thousands of years. So it shows us that they didn't need to work harder to make the tools better. Some people ask how do they put a difference between chimpanzees and ancient primates. First of all, the fossils prove a lot of different things throughout evolution. With the help of the fossils, it's very obvious that these animals would not walk on all four but they would rather walk. Another huge difference you see between monkeys and ancient primates is the power of their shoulder, which we talked about in the previous video. And it's also good to know that Homo habilis shoulder is even weaker than the Australopithecus. Another thing that's different is that they stand more upright, so their spine is more straight, but they're still not as straight as a modern human. In our previous clip, we said the Australopithecus has an average height of one meter, but as you can clearly see, the Homo habilis grew by a lot, and they have an average height of about 1.6 meters, and their weight gained by 10 kilograms, so they have an average weight of 50 kilos. Another huge difference you'll see in this primate is that it has longer legs, and its arm does not hang as low as his knees anymore. The longer legs allowed him to walk more straight, and run faster. Lucy or other Australopithecus could not run very fast. The reason Australopithecus couldn't run fast is because they were very top heavy and their legs were short and small. So let's talk about the most important body part, the brain. What's the difference between those two? We first have to say that the size of the brain doesn't determine how smart a species is. Like for example, an elephant has a ginormous brain. It's smart, but it's not that smart. You have to compare it the body size to the brain ratio. And Homo habilis, compared to its body size, it had a rather large brain. Just the same way where the Homo habilis grew in size and weight, its brain also grew. You could see the size difference with the help of their skulls as well. Homo habilis is much less clumsy than the Australopithecus, and in terms of finding food and hunting, it could think longer and better. You could imagine that the Australopithecus didn't use his brain power as hard as the Homo habilis. When scientists inspect the Australopithecus skull, you'll see that the size of its brain was about 400 cubic centimeters. But when you look at the Homo habilis, it's about 600 cubic centimeters. Australopithecus male to female size was not much different. But when you get to early Homo habilis, they get very different in sizes and the males grow much larger. This is something you see in gorillas because a male gorilla 
is usually hundreds of kilograms larger than the female gorilla. But when you get into the later Homo habilis, meaning hundreds of thousands of years, the male and female size become very similar, and scientists believe that this size difference continues to this day. The more you move forward with the Homo habilis, its snout gets smaller, the eyebrow bridge gets thinner, and its face gets flatter, and its nose also starts to form to look more like a human. And of course, its brain power is becoming more complex and more powerful. Luis and Mary Leakey were the first people to find the Homo habilis skull, and that was in the year 1955. Most of the information we gave about the Homo habilis was based of the different fossils that they found with the help of different archaeological work. And Raymond Dart was the first person to use the Greek work habilis on this type of primate. And just like we said, habilis is a Greek word for able, or you could also call it sufficient ability, power, or skillful. For the Homo habilis to stay alive, it had to use its IQ. The Homo habilis had a lot of enemies where it lived. Predators like hyenas, leopards, saber-toothed tigers, and different types of crocodile. So in this type of a lifestyle, the Homo habilis was forced to use its brain to stay alive longer. You could say the pressure this creature put on its brain helped it to evolve to get smarter and smarter. We have to move to about 1 million years ago when the habilis reaches its evolution and they turn into the Homo erectus. But that's for the next episode.